Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today in front of us, I've got a couple of new sets. This is part of the new Botanical Collection, the Flower Bouquet and the Bonsai Tree. We're both sent to us from the Lego group to do a review. And uh, I'm gonna be getting into each of these sets individually, talking about their attributes, showing you guys some of the interesting building techniques that I have not personally seen from Lego sets so far. And before I jump in though, there's something that occurred to me just as I was doing this, so let me change the shot. I just thought it was kind of interesting when showing the part to price ratio. I was gonna talk about prices and stuff. Each of one of these sets goes for $50 or 50 euro or 45 pounds, each one respectively. But the flower bouquet is 756 pieces, the bonsai tree is 878. Now, in terms of overall mass, this looks like way bigger. It takes up a lot more space. There's a lot of larger pieces included. Um, and there's also a ton of tiny little ones. So it's just kind of interesting seeing uh, the two respective sets here in terms of overall plastic mass. Uh, this technically has less pieces. That has more, but uh, right. So I just wanted to say part to price ratio isn't really a factor here. There's a lot of weird, interesting, unique pieces in both of these sets that we've never gotten before. And uh, we also get a large quantity of pieces too for certain special parts that is a pretty unique feature of both of these sets. Alrighty, let's jump into the bonsai tree set first. This one I think grabbed my attention a little bit more when I first saw the announcement of the botanical collection and it's got some really nice, simple details. You can see that this stand here at the bottom, there is the, the wooden stand here. It's super simple. They didn't decide to change the browns up too much. There's a little bit of dark brown in there. And you can see some from underneath. You can actually just take this off. And very simple construction, but I like that because it doesn't take away or distract at all from what you're really wanting to look at, which is this display piece here. I love that uh, it doesn't actually attach on. I would flip it over, but there's a lot of loose parts in here. We've got some wheels that have a little bit of extra uh, traction here onto the top stand there. So it doesn't stud in, but it also doesn't wobble around. In fact, you can see I can, I can push it and tap it pretty hard, but it's not gonna be moving around off of there because that rubber uh, has a pretty good bit of contact against the brown tiles. So it's a really, really simple construction, which I super appreciate. And then that leaves all the strange and interesting connections to the tree itself. So we're seeing some, uh, first of all, this, I think this rubber, this rubber fence piece that we first saw in the Jurassic World sets in flat silver is coming out in brown. So we're seeing it wrapped around the entire build of the tree, which is great. They're very soft and very easy to manipulate, which is nice. And this is uh, gonna definitely be a game changer in terms of a detail piece. We've got this sort of elephant trunk in dark brown, and there's another one here and it's sort of clipped off in a strange way. There's a little bit of variation between brown and dark brown, but not a whole lot. They didn't really decide to make the tree bark you know, three different shades. They didn't throw dark tan or light tan in there. They just have reddish brown and dark brown. These are relatively new macaroni pieces. These two by two round curved bits. If I can actually just take it off, I'll show you guys. Very, very simple, easy style of construction, but it looks pretty darn excellent in this particular place here. So. It's a very simple bit of construction. The, there's a trifecta of a few different hinge plates that create this splitting motion here in the middle and the top. And it makes for a very old and almost characteristically bonsai looking tree with the arched trunk and the twisted limbs because these are usually very, very old trees that have been manicured in a way to not grow particularly big. In fact, that's sort of the whole point. And often you get these strange twisting trunks in the process. So it's a very, very interesting style and we've got tons and tons of loose one by one round tiles, tan, gold, and uh, I believe that is olive green. So pretty, uh, pretty odd color choices, or not odd color choices, but it's an odd build style that we got so many loose parts. I don't know if this was an official technique 
before this set came out. Uh, I think it was, um, or no, I think it wasn't. So I think this is the first time we're seeing just a big pile of loose bricks as uh, an acceptable build style within a Lego set. So now if you're making water or something by just throwing a bunch of studs in place, well, now it is considered officially okay to do. So uh, that's a pretty interesting idea. And um, there's one more cool thing about this set, and that is the changeover of the season. So these look very much like cherry blossoms. Uh, there's three identical larger sub-assemblies and this one smaller one. And uh, before I, I do the reattachment, I just wanna show you guys what we're looking at here. Tons of pink frogs, a few magenta smaller flowers, and they're all on top of those smaller white tree leaf pieces. I'm not sure the exact name of that part, but look at all those pink frogs. You get a huge amount, and I really like that they make the entire sub-assembly easy to take off and reattach. It's not like the, um, the whatchamacallit, the creator treehouse set where you can change seasons on that larger treehouse set, but you have to meticulously pull off every single little branch piece, which is not easy to do. The, uh, they learned their lesson from that, and now all you have to do, if I can do it without uh, doing it in a funny way, here we go. You just pull this piece off here, and you do the simple reattachment. And there you go, that's it. Super simple and easy. You get to keep, it's also a few extra parts if you wanted to just hold on to one version of the bonsai tree display. Uh, I really like that they made that easy because at the end of the day, um, just having a bunch of extra pieces that you have to very carefully and meticulously pull off of all of these different bars, you probably just wouldn't want to do it. You would just choose the single version of the tree that you enjoy and then you would just stick with that. Uh, case in point, I love that Creator Treehouse set, but we didn't even bother taking the extra autumn co uh, colors out of their bags. So um, you can see that we just didn't even bother with that function in the other set. But now with the changing seasons, it'll be super easy to just pull off these uh, different sub-assemblies and play around between springtime and maybe the rest of the year. And maybe even we could do some of our fall colors and make other sub-assemblies later down the line. So anyways, that's a really, really good lesson learned for the bonsai tree. Let's move on to the flower bouquet. I'm gonna go through each of these flowers individually first and uh, also I think contextually, this is worth pointing out. The manual has the names for any of the flowers that you don't recognize immediately, which was definitely helpful for me. So uh, yeah, I didn't need any help with the first one here though. The rose is pretty recognizable. They didn't do it in that sort of traditional red rose, but there are just so many different variations of the rose that, here we go, let's see if I can. Very interesting. So it's a flesh tone exterior with these car, uh, these car toppers, like the hoods that have wheel wells there. That's the leaf petals with a few different rounded over four by four type uh, plates and or tile pieces, I'm not sure the name of it. And then a little bit of tan and white for the center. So a pretty unique um, mousse. I think it's supposed to kind of imitate a very light pink kind of rose. And uh, the flesh tone is what the designers sort of thought worked best here. And if you can notice, look at that. So this is really helpful for displays. This leaf piece, is on a clip that has some clutch so you can have the leaf, the leaf uh, tilting in and out, but this is really helpful for not accidentally bumping or snapping off when you're actually setting up a bouquet, which is something uh, I didn't really realize what that was for at first and then I was setting it up in a vase and went, oh, okay, that actually makes a lot of sense. So there's the rose. Then next up is the snapdragon. This is a flower that I certainly recognize from seeing in the real world at times, but I definitely didn't know the name when I was first doing this. Sorry, that shot was just bugging me. It was not focusing. The light wasn't good, but now hopefully it's a little bit better for you. This is an amazing color gradation that we have. I think this is magenta. This is the dark pink, the regular pink or the light pink. And uh, we just have a little bit of lime green, sand green uh, kind of thrown in and around the stems in the center. 
Uh, once again, these leaf pieces move around here, but this is really just kind of an amazing look for the flowers. You can, you can bend them up and down in different places, but for the most part, this is all sort of meant to be pointing upwards like this. And I do want to point out very quickly that the other Snapdragon here has an alternate uh, tilted head, different, slightly different stem piece. You can play around with these different tilted head stem pieces with other flowers. So you could change it up with the rose if that's what you wanted to do. I think this is the default build style here. So these two are not exactly the same. And then I was kind of kicking myself for not having got the lavender uh, on my first guess. I didn't really realize it at first, but of course, uh, yeah, they're using the lavender pieces here. And this flower has a bit of sort of drying details around here. They did it with the brown and gold. Uh, and I think it looks really, really nice. Uh, the, the gold and brown definitely have a way of contrasting uh, quite well against a lot of the other more colorful pieces here. And it also makes the lavender little smaller flowers here pop well just within this singular bill. It's a very long and straight piece. And also you might notice, uh, I've noticed this because we had this up in a vase for maybe a week, week and a half or something like that. So uh, there is already a little bit of tilting that you can see with these long axle pieces, tons of long axles and sand green, by the way, which is great. But uh, just be noted that, yeah, over time, these axles will bend because these were on display for about a week and we already got a little bit of bending in some of them. The same can be seen, that same bend can be seen as I twist it around. You can just see that it wants to go from one other side, but this is Aster. There we go, focused for you. Really nice. This, was, this is a flower I don't think I ever actually knew the name of, but perhaps I've seen before in the past. Very, very simple, we have this lighter purple, not lavender, and then we've got the actual deeper regular purple as clip pieces on the inside with just a singular lavender piece in the center to kind of show that the petals are just getting lighter towards the middle. It's a really, really simple kind of design actually, and also something I wanna point out to you guys if I can get that light to work better. This is a big old green steering wheel. Uh, it's not the only time this actually exists with the rose petals, I forgot to point it out. That's a really cool uh, different piece as well because it's on a two by two round brick, but it's all one singular mold. Very interesting piece, I love to get this. Really helps out sort of the organic features here. So this is Aster. And then the common daisies are all pretty uh, easy to see as well. Some more black clips there at the bottom that connect these flowers. And when you wiggle them around, some of them have a little bit of looseness to the clips. That's just how, how it kind of works sometimes. But for the most part, they're pretty easy to display out in whatever little mini small configuration. You can have them separated a little bit or sort of coming together, um, being a little bit closer together. So fine, easy pieces for the daisy. I love that we just get tons of these round uh, one by two round plate pieces. They really are my favorite bit for custom building. Very simple build here. And then being a California native, this would have been embarrassing if I didn't know what this was without the help of the book, but I do. It is the California poppy. They are native to, I think, just California and maybe parts of Mexico. They're a really, really, really vibrant orange flower with a bit of yellow on the inside. It's a great shape. Uh, you can see the undersides of these studs here uh, as, you, as you twist it around. A little bit of lighter, regular green. Not too much of this actually in this set, which is kind of interesting. The standard green color. This is the most standard green you see in this set. It's just this little bit underneath the poppy. But uh, really nice. Also, I like that you just get a little bit of that yellow too. You just get a little bit of that yellow too, which is a subtle little color detail. Uh, but it, it pops through and I appreciate that. This is probably my favorite one. I really just like this flower a lot in real life. And uh, it looks great in Lego bricks. Now the last two elements of this set I'm gonna be showing off together. You get three of these and two of these in the set. And it's just kind of leaves or wild grass. I don't think there's an explanation for it. Uh, you just get these larger pieces in here. The more of this I see, the more interesting sand green shapes that I see. I love that we get a, a three surfboards in sand green, really, really fun shape in this color. Uh, I really wanna see a Planet Express built at some point. There's enough sand green now, but uh, also these are some plant-based elements 
actually made from plant bases here these bush pieces in dark uh in the in the dark green they actually look a little bit different than normal dark green i don't know if i'm just i've just been staring at this for so long but this does feel a little bit off compared to the normal dark green uh, these pieces also feel a little thinner as well these are the plant-based parts and there's a few other in brown and other colors around here as well so anyways let's get these all into a display and i can show you guys what it all looks like in a vase. The set does not come with a brick built vase for you. I'm sure there's a lot of people that will be playing around with their own version of a brick built vase. This is a normal one that we have here and it's full of trans clear one by two plates if you can see that. They're all Lego pieces in the bottom here and let's kind of just make some space and make a vase. Apologies, I never went to finishing school. I don't really know about bouquet etiquette or, 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 or placing styles or theory behind flower bouquets, but I do think it looks pretty good. I will say in retrospect, uh, making your vase full of one by ones is a little bit easier for spiking and placing some of the stems down there. Uh, one by two plates are slightly bigger, a little bit harder to kind of nudge out of the way. But for the most part, I'm really liking the way these flowers all kind of found themselves. A few of them are kind of lying on top of each other in ways that um, I maybe an expert would be able to place slightly better. But it does look pretty darn good. I'm pretty happy with the way that this turned out. Really quickly, here are the boxes for both of these sets. Very simple with just a, it's black with just a little bit of a green hint or undertone behind the main build. But uh, yes, very, very basic and more adult. Obviously not too flashy with lots of crazy designs. Uh, something nice and easy and uh, doesn't draw the eye in any particular way, but very clean nonetheless. And I noticed Lego's been doing a lot of this similar design detail for their boxes uh, throughout several different themes. Now I do know in the very near future they are releasing sets for the roses and tulips as individual uh, Lego sets that can be added stylistically to uh, this botanical collection. So you will be able to get red roses pretty similar to this and other tulip flowers. My guess is they're probably gonna keep on making more. There's some really interesting builds in here bunch of amazing new pieces and lots of them for both of these sets so that's pretty nice uh, the bonsai tree is a really really wonderfully created design i really like how easy they made these sub assemblies to change and alter around it really is much better than uh, the treehouse set that we saw before uh, fun sets for adults obviously these are display pieces and something like this could easily take the place of plastic flowers or plants maybe that you already have in your house. So anyways, thank you so much for watching everybody. Thank you for to Lego for sending these sets over to us. Let me know what you guys think about these sets in the description below. And we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. <laughs>